Hello, today I'm going to talk about Let's Settle This, Mesh in a Heidel Hernia Repair. Dr. Sarah Samreen helped me put this talk together and I'm giving her some uh, props here. And my name is Dmitry Olenikov and I'm Chair of Department of Surgery. My disclosure is that I've uh, received the research funding from Acelity. I will not mention uh, uh, their products in this talk. Dr. Sarah Samreen has nothing to disclose. Four gut surgeons have a consensus on all but one technical aspect of parasophageal hernia repair. Laparoscopic approach, check. Hernia sac dissection, check. Sufficient length of intra-abdominal esophagus, needed, absolutely. Fundoplication, everybody agrees that some fundoplication is important, but very few people agree on the reinforcement of the chloroplasty. How do you do it? And even if you use mesh at all or non-absorbable, non-absorbable biologic. In the study by Franzidis and colleagues, they looked at mesh repair. And what they found in 5,000 patients, as you can see here, various meshes were used, everything from biomaterial to PTFE to polypropylene to polyepsor, composite, and some not even specified. And that's important because if mesh is being used, then we need to understand what are its results, benefits, um, and drawbacks. The problem with failure of crural uh, repair is what's pushing us to do mesh in the first place. In the study uh, in 2006 by uh, the Demaria group, they showed that in a no mesh group, their short term mesh recurrence rates um, were up to 10.7%. And um, in the uh, mesh group, the short-term recurrence rate was about 1.9%. This data was always, always very attractive and made everybody look twice about using mesh. So what's the primary cruel repair of pillars? Primary cruel repair of pillars has been the mainstay for repair, but has a high recurrence rate of 42%. We've known this for many years now. Why does primary chiropractic fail? Likely hernia defect with an intrathoracic stomach is quite large and closure is usually under some tension. Pillars are often quite thin and made of attenuated muscle, not fascia. In constant, frequent, repeated episode of stress on the diaphragm from breathing, coughing, valsalva maneuvers all contribute to recurrences. So why not reinforce them with mesh? High failure of primary hydroplasty prompted surgeons to advocate that cruel repair be reinforced. Seems logical since the use of mesh has become the standard of care for inguinal, ventral, and other types of hernias and have resulted in a drastic reduction in recurrence rates in those conditions. In a study by my good friend and co-fellow Brent Oschleger, um, a multi-institutional trial done in the annals of surgery with leading authors such as Dr. Spiro Greeny, Hunter, Sofer, Brunt, uh, Brett Shepard, Blair Job, uh, Nag Palliser, Metsamori, Nelson, and Swanstrom showed that if you take 108 subjects and roll, roll them into a, a randomized prospective trial, you get about 57 repaired primarily and about 51 prepared with SIS mesh, which is a uh, biologic um, mesh. The primary endpoint was an anatomic recurrence. And what they showed at six months was that um, uh, patients did real well after surgery, and if you look at the um, their symptoms, they had very low symptoms, not a lot of dysphagia. But what you could see is a 24% recurrence rate by, uh, through a barium swallow in the primary repair and a 9% in the mesh repair. And this data was very exciting in 2006. So what... So what can we say about the overview of absorbable and biologic mesh for iodoplasty? Well, certainly, uh, why use mesh? Limitations in data, mesh materials, lack of good human data, there's always costs, and of course, there's always new research to show that what we did 10 years ago may not be the best. So in that same paper that I just showed you in short-term follow-up, Dr. Oschleger and his colleagues went back and looked at a long-term follow-up. And you can see the number is a little bit smaller. They had 20 out of 34 come back in the, uh, um, in the primary group and 14 out of 26 in the SIS group. The average size of hernia 
um, was about uh, 24 um, millimeters or 2.4 centimeters in the PR group and about 24 in the SIS group at, at the follow-up period, which was almost five years. And two patients in the PR group required reoperation um, while nobody in the mesh group had it. So their conclusion was, and I'm sorry, uh, let me go back to that. Their conclusion was that um, mesh for long-term does not seem to change radiographic recurrence and most patients tend to do well, but those patients that have an early recurrence, mesh seems to prevent that or at least somewhat reduce that. And that means fewer trips back to the operating room. And I couldn't agree more with that. In a systematic review done uh, by Zhang and colleagues, um, there are many, many studies here shown. I'll, I'll just show you what I think is important. If you look at studies where, um, where the hiatal hernia was greater than eight centimeters, greater than five centimeters, and even in small hiatal hernias, in each group, mesh was favored over no mesh or suture repair alone. This was for um, all events, including recurrences and other problems. This is our data, Ringley in 06, also showed same as Oschleger in 06 data, that for short-term um, hiatal hernia repairs uh, with mesh were very positive. So what about mesh at the hiatus? Everybody should get it, use whatever you want. No, hiatus is a dynamic area and there's constant movement of the hiatus, esophagus shortens with each swallow. There are many problems with mesh. Erosions, as shown by Stanberg and others, shrinkage, fixation problems with cardiac uh, issues, and reoperation associated with 6.8 times increased risk of requiring major resection, especially if the mesh was uh, permanent or a biologic mesh that was cross-linked so it doesn't dissolve well. Also, how you put the mesh matters. These are just some ways that um, that have been shown to, to cause increased problems. Mesh erosions into the esophagus, um, stricturing, if you do a 360, um, as shown in here, or mesh that is, um, that is covering most of the esophagus, as shown in here. So properly placed mesh is also important. So, so what do surgeons need to know about mesh? You gotta select the right mesh, and it's critical to the outcome of your operation. Must take into account patient characteristics such as age, defect size, obesity, underlying disease processes, and others as they affect outcome. Must know mechanical compatibility between the hernia meshes and the abdominal wall. Layers avoid postoperative complications and recurrences. So what this really basically is saying is that is that if you're going to be using a um, a biologic mesh in, in a in a very very large periosophageal hernia under tension. Uh, that may not be enough. You may consider a relaxing incision or your mesh may fail. Must have understanding of mechanical properties of mesh, as mentioned earlier. So in conclusion, it appears that mesh benefit is threefold decreased reduction in recurrence rate at six months. So early recurrence is clearly beneficial. It is possible that mesh, although not protective against rec recurrent hernias long-term, may reduce the risk of severe herniation, at least enough to require reoperation. To provide stronger evidence that this is different in real world would require a much larger study with a much higher power. The results of the study suggest that biologic mesh at the hiatus does not have any long-term negative sequela, and that's been shown by many, other than increased cost, which should be looked at carefully. In light of these findings, does short-term benefit justify the use? We believe that it does, or at least it justifies the continued investigation of mesh usage in this setting. With this, I'll stop my talk and ask for any questions. Thank you.